Good morning, my name is Giles Andrews. I'm the arbitrator in these proceedings. Uh, my decision is legally binding on both parties as per the agreement. I have read the relevant pleadings and evidence in this matter and hearing will be in order. This is a hearing in the matter of arbitration of a dispute between the claimant, Mr. James Tennant, and the respondent, Ms. Pauline Landlord. The order of today's proceedings is as follows. Claimant will be allowed to make submissions, followed by the respondent. I would therefore like to hear the arguments from the claimant first, whenever you're ready. Sir, it is the claimant's case that the respondent has breached several sections of the Landlord and Tenant Act, as well as clauses in the lease agreement. The claimant is the owner of a bakery business, which operates from premises owned by the respondent. The claimant rents said property under a lease agreement, which can be found in your case bundle under Exhibit A. The lease is for one year and has been renewed by the claimant twice previously. On September the 15th, the claimant noticed several leaking water pipes in the bakery. And if Mr Arbitrator can turn to Exhibit B of the case bundle, he will see photographic evidence of the leaking pipes as well as the damage caused. The claimant called the respondent two days later to inform them of the leaking pipes and requested that someone be sent as soon as possible. The respondent failed to send someone for two weeks. The respondent has breached clause 2.2 of the lease agreement, which sets out the landlord's repair obligations. This clause specifically states that the landlord is obliged to keep in repair and working order the installations in the dwelling for the supply of water, gas, electricity, and for sanitation. This wording mirrors section 11 of the Landlord and Tenant Act 1985, the landlord therefore breached both the contractual agreement and statute by failing to keep in repair and working order the supply of water in the bakery. The respondent's response to the situation also breached sections 8 and 10 of the Landlord and Tenant Act 1985. The respondent did not, as she is obliged to do, dispatch someone in a reasonable time and because of this fact made the place uninhabitable for humans. The claimant had to switch off one of the ovens as there was water dripping near electricity, making the premises a serious violation of health and safety laws. The respondent, whilst it is admitted sent over people to look at the leaky pipes, did not give the claimant 24 hours notice to enter the premises as she is required to do under law, as the claimant has exclusive possession of the premises. So the claimant was well within his rights to turn away the workmen as a landlord had not upheld her statutory obligations. The claimant has requested monetary damages, firstly for loss of business due to a drop in capacity, as one of the ovens had to be switched off and large orders were unfulfilled. And secondly, for damage, damage to the carpet, tiles and damp on the walls, the costs of which amount to £5,400 and can be found on the damages form, Exhibit C, of the case bundle. Uh, unless I can be of any further assistance, this concludes the submissions of the claimant. <clears throat> if I may now hear submissions from the respondent. Sir, the claimant has built their case around flawed legal reasoning. The respondent therefore submits that the agreement between a claimant and respondent was not a lease but a licence to occupy agreement. A licence to occupy agreements grants a non-exclusive licence to the property on a short-term basis. Under clause 5 of the contract, if the arbitrator may look at page 4, specifically states that subject to clauses 1 and 3, the owner gives a licence during the period stated on page 1 of the intended time for the purpose of the commercial business of the licensee. Council, doesn't it clearly state it's a lease on the first page of the agreement? Mr Arbitrator, the area of land law looks at content and not form. Thus, just because the document has on its head that it is a lease doesn't mean it is. We must look at the content to ascertain what rights are given by the respondent to the claimant in renting the property. Therefore, under Clause 5, there was intent to make this arrangement on a licence of occupy agreement. The claimant therefore did not have exclusive possession and was in breach of the agreement for turning away the workmen. The respondent therefore has a schedule for cost under Exhibit D of the case bundle detailing clearly the extent of the damage which was caused by the claimant's breach for not allowing the quick and prompt repair of the leaky pipes and additional costs of the workmen, the total cost comes to 2100 
I've read your briefs, listened to your arguments and reviewed your uh, evidence and will go away and make my judgment on the appropriate award.